Hi guys, welcome back to Art with Anna. It's been a while since I've made a video, um, but I'm out of town this week, so I'm not in person at Benjamin's Hope. So thank you for following along with me virtually. This month we've been talking about naive artists, and what that means is it's an artist who's become famous, but they didn't have any official training. They didn't go to art school. They weren't taught by a famous artist. They've kind of made up their art style on their own um, and oftentimes had completely different jobs and art was kind of something they did on the side because they, they loved and um, didn't think they could make any money at because again they weren't trained. So um, today we are going to focus on one of those artists. Her name is Seraphine Lewis. Now a little bit about her. Um, she lived in France. She was a very religious woman. Um, in fact she worked at a convent for a really long time uh, that's a place where nuns live and she wasn't a nun herself but did some domestic work like cooking and cleaning and um, helping out around the convent and then eventually she became a housekeeper and that was her her main career and on the side she painted um, and she often painted florals um, and they're stunning we're gonna look at them here so here's a few of her paintings now, something to note about her paintings is they are usually a lot of leaves or a lot of flowers. Um, and they're supposed to kind of be reminiscent of stained glass windows that she would have been surrounded by when she was working in the convent or when she was going to church um, and the churches that she was going to around her. So she was a little bit influenced by that, by stained glass. So you'll see it's not really symmetrical, her art, um, but it's kind of geometric. Um, in shape, how she how she places things on the canvas. Now, um, since she wasn't trained and she didn't really have professional art supplies, she would make art on household objects, um, on fabric, but she did find board, leftover boards, and eventually did use canvases, but she would make art on anything. Something also cool about her is she experimented a lot with different things. Um, It'd be kind of nighttime when she was making art because she'd work during the day. So her art would have some soot on it from like the fire or light source that she was near um, when she was trying to paint. Um, they'd find wax on her painting. So she'd purposely drip wax from a candle that was maybe lighting the canvas while she painted. Um, they found mud mixed into her paint. She was just trying a lot of things. She painted because she loved to paint and she was just trying things out. Um, eventually she did get kind of discovered by an art critic who just happened to be her employer um, as a housekeeper. So he kind of found her through that and started collecting her work. So she did um, kind of see, see some fame in her life in her lifetime, um, even as a naive artist. So that's a little bit about our artists today. Let's take a look closer at some of the pieces of art and we'll talk about the details and then talk about how we're going to recreate it today. All right, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of florals that she painted. That was the main thing that she painted. Um, she was just inspired by florals, but they kind of have almost a geometric look to them with the way that she places leaves and flowers. Um, and that was maybe an inspiration from all the stained glass that was around her. Um, so we're gonna take a look at some of these. Some details in her art. Well, some things to notice about her art. We've talked in the past about how oftentimes naive artists kind of ignored the ideas that came with um, with traditional art. If you went to art school, the things you would have learned. And maybe they weren't ignoring them. Maybe they just were never taught them, right? So they didn't know. So perspective is kind of different. Um, you can tell that these are leaves, but they don't look realistic, right? Um, and they look kind of flat, and that's the case in these. There's a lot of leaves, and you can see dimension because some are kind of in the back and some are in the front, but there isn't much shading going on, um, and the leaves are all kind of a flatter shape. Um, so that's something to think about while we're making art like hers today. So the one I want to focus on today that we'll be recreating is this one called Pomegranate on a Green Background. Um, and it's these beautiful reds and oranges on this very, very pale green um, background. So the colors are complementary. She did a great job with that. That's something you would have learned about in art school. Um, but something that I like about naive artists are 
the fact that they have kind of ignored these ideas about art or they haven't been taught them, it makes their art more interesting. It's not the same boring art you would see over and over by people who are come up, had come out of the same art school. Um, so something I like about this is just the use of color. And then kind of something that she is maybe iconic for is in her leaves and her flowers, there was always a lot of dot work. Um, so if we zoom in, you'll be able to see all, each leaf has so many different dots in it. Um, and that's going to be something that we're really going to recreate today. So let's talk about the supplies we need and then we'll get started making a piece of artwork like uh, Seraphine. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is a piece of watercolor paper. And that's because we're also going to need watercolors, a brush, there, now you can see it. <laughs> we're going to need um, a yellow piece of construction paper as well. We'll need some glue. We'll need some scissors. And then the paint we'll need, we will need white paint. I don't know if you guys can see there. We will need black paint. We'll need red paint. <laughs> we will need yellow paint. So I, hopefully, if you're at Benjamin's Hope, I will have all those supplies up for you um, and you won't have to think too much about it. But if not, those are the supplies we'll need and let's get started. All right, let's quick take a look at our painting before we start actually um, diving in, just because it's been a little bit since we grabbed our supplies. So on our sheet of paper, we're gonna wanna make this green. The background of the pomegranate on a green background is green. <laughs> um, something really nice about this painting are the colors and like I mentioned green and red are complementary colors those are two colors opposite on the color wheel that look really nice together um, and I think this is a great example sometimes when we think of red and green we can think of Christmas colors um, but I think this is a better example of, of what they mean by that so the background is really really a pale green it's kind of more green toward the bottom and fades to white and then we've got our painting on top of that so our first step is to make that background we're gonna want to start um, by kind of covering our entire piece of watercolor paper with water. Um, this is called a wet on wet wash. So let's grab out our paper. We're going to take our paintbrush. We're going to dip it in some water and just water without any paint. We're going to want to kind of get a layer of water across our entire sheet of paper before we add any green. So I'm quickly and without really thinking about it, it does not have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get some water all over this watercolor paper. And that's because this um, watercolor is going to just spread a little more evenly if it's already being added to some water. So it's a little bit wet everywhere. I'm grabbing my watercolors and I'm going to dip into some green. Um, just like her painting, I'm going to kind of focus the green toward the bottom. So she really had more green down here. And hers is kind of yellow green, so I might add some yellow if I'm feeling a little ambitious, but don't feel like you need to. And I'm just washing that color up. A little bit more. I'm personally going to add a little bit of yellow, but again, don't feel like you need to. Pull that color up. And sometimes I'm just going in with just water just to spread it out. And we're going to fade it up to really just white up here. If you color the whole thing green, that's totally fine too. Honestly, wherever you want green, you're the artist that's going to be the right spot you have green. All right, so I don't know how well you can tell, but we've got some green here kind of fading to white. So that's going to be our first step. Our next step is to get out a little bit of black paint. So um, if we look back here at our painting, we've got this pale green background, but on top is this really, really bold black kind of stem work that comes out. Um, so we are going to recreate that by adding some black acrylic paint there. 
that came out a little more splattery than I intended. And we're just gonna, right over our watercolor, make some branches. Being somewhat symmetrical, not perfectly, um, but if you have one branch going this way, let's do one over here, one over here, one over here. We've got two of these kind of side branches coming off. Let's do a few down there. Her paintings did look quite symmetrical, um, but not perfectly. Again, they kind of stained glass where it's kind of geometric and things are placed kind of in order, but it's not a perfect order. So now we've got a perfect background to our piece of artwork, but I want to bring most of the attention to the detail that she um, adds in her art and where I think she puts most of her attention, and that's in the leaves. Um, if we look at the leaves, there's so much detail in them. They are just covered in all these little dots that kind of give them some kind of dimension. Um, and they've got all these beautiful shapes and they kind of just sprawl out across the canvas. So that's what we're going for today. Um, you should have your yellow sheet of paper. We're gonna cut out a bunch of leaf shapes from the sheet of paper. And we'll add the dots on top with paint before gluing them across our artwork here. All right, so we're going to make a leaf shape, and that looks a lot like that. That's kind of a leaf shape. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. Kind of like that. So we're going to want to make a lot of those on this sheet of paper um, to help it make that a little bit easier. If we fold our paper up a little bit, We'll have to make less cuts um, and we'll get more of these um, shapes out of it. So I'm just folding the paper a little bit, making some leaf shapes. They do not have to be the same and they do not have to be perfect by any means. Like that. And we're going to cut them out. So we've got all of these pretty little leaf shapes. I think I should have about 16 total. So somewhere around there is what you'll want. I would say between 10 and 20 leaves. And now is the fun part of adding the detail. Um, in these leaves, there are some dark bits. There are some white dots. There are some red dots. There's kind of some orange dots. So with the colors we have, we should have black, we should have white. Red and yellow, you can put these on pure, um, like straight black, do some dots of straight black, do some dots of straight white, you know, clean your brush. Um, but it's also okay to mix the colors. She used, she made some pretty unique colors just by mixing the ones that she had. So with red and yellow, hold on maybe. You can make various shades of orange um, with those two colors. So keep that in mind too. That's an op option too as well. Since I already have a little bit of black on our brush from making our um, branches, I'm going to go through and just kind of spackle on some dots of black on different leaves. Just like that, no rhyme or reason, um, just adding detail where you want it. And then I, oh, I'm gonna clear off my brush. 
I do notice that she has a lot of um, bright white on her leaves. I'm going to try to get my brush pretty clean here, although it's probably not going to be perfect. Um, and oftentimes the white is right in the middle. I think it's a way that she's trying to show dimension. So I'm going to do something similar on some of these leaves and really get white going down the middle. That I have pure white I think the fun part is going to be having different shades of yellow and red um, so I'm not going to worry about cleaning my brush in between dots anymore I'm just going in with these colors and I'm going to just see how they mix onto the leaf themselves This is where she put the detail, so this is where I want you spending the time. I, this is where I want your detail to be. Is getting these leaves covered. And you can go in and layer and layer. So this is kind of layered up. If I want to feel like I, there should be more white on there, I can layer that up. And that will also change the color of my mixed paint for my next leaf. All right, so now I think we're gonna have a little bit of fun. If we look at her paintings, um, Seraphine's paintings of leaves, of flowers, often have some a little bit of symmetry to them. Again, not perfect, but she typically has kind of like a center line. So we're gonna kind of think about that. Think about where our center line is on our branches. Um, and I'm gonna put some glue down. And I'm gonna put three leaves down the middle to give us kind of that middle line. So we know kind of from what line we are going to be somewhat symmetrical. Like that, all right. So now I know from the left side, I'm going to have my leaves 
facing left and to the right side I'm gonna have my leaves facing right so we'll start with the left I'm just gonna put some areas of blue down where I think I'm gonna want some leaves to go and I'm just gonna place them we want to make sure that they're facing away from the leaves in the center Alright, so we've got some leaves like that, and we're going to do the same with the other side. Now these are facing away from the middle again. Don't be afraid also to overlap your leaves a little bit. I really didn't do that on the other side, but Seraphine's artwork does have some overlapping leaves. All right. This one here. Let's make some, something overlap on this side. Uh, and just like that, we have a very Seraphine Lewis piece of artwork here. We've got the things that we need, right? We have the complementary colors. We've got the reds with the green. We've got some sort of kind of a pattern here. It's not perfectly symmetrical, um, but the leaves are going this way and this way, and in the middle, some of them overlap. We've got the deep branch color in the background. And we've really finessed every single leaf with a lot of detail um, with these dots of paint. Overall, I think our replica is somewhat close to the original. What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, congratulations. You made it to the end of Art with Anna. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Hope you learned a little about our artist. And I will be back next week. And I'll see you then. Bye.